Uh, hello, everyone. So first of all, it's a great honor to uh, have uh, uh, this honor to be able to uh, set up a roundtable after Your Excellency. Um, thank you so much for your inspired words. So uh, I'm Joanna, and I'm the executive director of French Healthcare, which is, first of all, a public brand uh, owned by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs and that aim to promote French company and French hospital and excellencies all over the world. Our job is clearly to, to set up partnerships that uh, will serve uh, both countries. Um, so today I'm uh, very, very happy to, uh, to moderate uh, this panel. Um, we will try to make it interactive and, uh, and uh, lively. So I will start with, uh, with you, Amar. Thank you very much for being here. So first of all, if, we, if you could uh, present yourself, but I know that you have uh, more than uh, 20 years experience in uh, GCC's countries in the field of health. So if you could present yourself, your expertise, and uh, what you could have learned since uh, two decades uh, in the region. Thank you, Amar. Uh, merci, Joran. So, uh, salam alaikum. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so I'm very pleased to be here and allow me to speak in full transparency. Uh, I've been actually uh, not too far from France. I'm actually an HSA <laughs> alumni, so I've received my MBA on HSA. So a lot of visits here studying, not uh, very appealing when I remember it, but <laughs> that's fine. So uh, my name is Amr Mitwali. I um, actually start completely different uh, from uh, far from healthcare, so I was football player, in fact, in Egypt. So I was in the national team until uh, 18, you can see some games, until I decided to go for healthcare for some reason. And uh, I started ever since probably more than 20 years right now on in healthcare between GCC countries and between UAE, Saudi, and now in Qatar. And I cannot find better introduction than uh, what Her Excellency mentioned in very short brief. Uh, the region change. And I think uh, I'm very excited to share today my insights to, to tell the true story about the health sector landscape and what's happening in JCC. When I started uh, 20 years ago, I've been guided. I did work and I took multiple positions from junior until very executive level right now. And GCC, minister, ministries, government. I used to, to guide it 20 years ago. Go find me, someone is buying this so we can buy it. Completely changed from what's happening in nowadays. Go find who's manufacturing this and ask him to come manufacturing in GCC. And this transforming, a big transformation happening in the region, I think it's a key for our discussion today. We are no longer the consuming market that we used to be in GCC. We are now seeing a very grow, big growing market uh, in all aspects from a facility perspective. A few hospitals in the GCC currently is listed one of the best 100 hospitals in the world. Uh, this is show you the, 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 where we are going. Uh, yet, of course, the, the, none of the market at the moment is reaching the, the full 100% mature market. So there is an opportunities, but the opportunity not from consumer base, it's completely from partnership, trust, and collaboration. And I think this is probably, if I will give a message today, will be this. And as I said, I cannot add more for what's happening more than Her Excellency very brief speech. This is really is, is briefing you about everything happening. We have digital health, we have telehealth, we have uh, digital transformation, we have AI integration, we have all of this. We need collaboration. And I think we are growing, we are growing very fast. And in that essence, we need collaboration. Thank you so much. It's uh, very interesting. We will Next, talk about. We will about speak more about that. <laughs> yes, for sure. We will. We will go back to those topics, but uh, for the introduction, um, I like what you said. To the, the, the dynamics that is going on now, and maybe to talk about this question, I would like to ask Jerome about uh, what is your experience as a CEO of a Saudi listed company. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think that's. Uh it would be difficult not to repeat any of the words that you just said, because that's, if I want to summarize what is happening in the GCC right now, is definitely the dynamic. 
And dynamic is a small world. I would say for me, it's more the speed of the things which are happening. Uh, I came, I would say, in this region, I would say, more than 30 years ago. Uh, I can tell you right from now, it's nothing as it was before. I came back three, four years ago in a region. And what I met when I arrived is totally different even today and is growing at a very important speed. I have a speed that was supported by majority of the states, okay, which are pushing for the development. And as I rightly said, not as it was the case before, okay. The case before is that it was just a consumer market. So everything was imported, everything was delivered, and so forth. So on. right now you have a, a very strong and uh, fully understandable will and wish to localize. And to localize not only by importing, but making sure that whatever is brought to the countries benefits also all the national. Okay? And that is true in many of the countries. So this is very, very important for whoever aim and should be aiming, I would say, to, to come and play a role there, to get that in mind, to be moving even more quicker, quicker than is the case, especially for the French company. Thank you very much. Um, to, go, to go a bit deeper into that, um, well, this roundtable is about GCCs, but we know that each country has its own agenda. Um, the dynamic could be like collective, but every country has a specific plan, development plan. Uh, do you want to, to, to give uh, the, the, the audience more insight uh, and also to, to help them to have a better understanding and being able to then to, to, to access these markets? Um, maybe Amer, but feel free. I mean, I like when it's uh, emulation, so you can all feel free to answer this question. Thank you. Uh, so I'm the CEO of Visiomed. So just a brief introduction about Visiomed. We are a French healthcare company. We were created in uh, 27. We are today listed on the Paris Stock Exchange. But in 2021, we have um, refocused most of our activities in the GCC region. Uh, we acquired a company called Smart Salem in the UAE. It's a builder and operator of uh, high-tech medical centers. So we have several medical centers in the UAE. Today, we have also launched um, a joint venture in Saudi Arabia uh, called Smart Health, which will open uh, its first uh, high-tech medical center in Riyadh in the, in the coming month. Um, so... Uh, I've been in the GCC region for more than 10 years now. I've uh, witnessed exactly um, this huge uh, transformation uh, that has been described by my colleagues. Um, we, we have a good experience on how to penetrate these markets. Um, the, the GCC markets are all different. They are at different stages. Uh, me, mostly, I can speak on the behalf of the UAE and Saudi markets that where we are working today. Um, I have to say that um, if I can add something, it's um, there is a strong uh, political push today with the Vision 2030 uh, in each of these countries. Healthcare is one of the, mo the most important pillars. Uh, foreign companies and European companies especially are welcome to bring their uh, know-how uh, and expertise. So in order to penetrate the market, uh, you need to understand the needs uh, of the local population, but also the local authorities. Um, so uh, most importantly, as it has been described, uh, what they are looking for is to produce locally. I would say, yes, they produce locally locally, but today also a big change is that they not only produced and manufacture, but they also create. I give you an example in our medical centers. We are using AI technologies, which are actually developed in the GCC. So you have GCC companies, um, uh, for example, in Abu Dhabi or Dubai, uh, who are developing AI softwares uh, linked to the medical industry or beyond that, and we are actually using these softwares. So they are also uh, now uh, scaling up uh, on uh, being present on the R&D. So you need to produce locally, you need to create jobs for the local population. You also need to transfer your expertise on your technology through a partnership. Uh, for us, in our experience, the best way uh, to uh, actually penetrate this market and work hand in hand with the local uh, 
authorities is to uh, put in place a PPP, so a public-private partnership. Uh, we have done that uh, in the UAE. It's working very well with the uh, healthcare authorities there, with the Ministry of Health. Uh, we are actually trying to replicate that in Saudi Arabia at the moment. Um, so uh, for me, uh, that's the, the best long-term partnership because it's bringing the best of two worlds, the public sectors with their vision on what they want to do, on the private sector with their uh, investment capacity and their innovation and expertise. Um, on uh, on uh, the last point that is very important for the local authorities, it's also to create a diversified source of revenues, uh, to diversify the economy from uh, oil and gas revenues. Uh, healthcare can be a good way about it, uh, especially with the medical tourism. Uh, when I arrived in the, in the country, uh, in the GCC, uh, more than 10 years ago, most of the local population, when they had a disease or needed surgery, they were actually traveling abroad in Europe or in the US uh, to get treatment. Today, it's completely the opposite. Uh, you have state-of-the-art and cutting-edge technologies on hospitals, on clinics in these countries. So the local population can, can get treatment locally. And you can see actually uh, people from the neighboring countries flying uh, to the UAE, for example, to get this treatment. So that's a big shift also. Thank you very much. Um, you, you pointed a lot of uh, very interesting points, but just to, to set up a, um, a strong basis for the people that are listening to, to this roundtable, um, to you, could, you, could we uh, go back a little bit in the different country strategies? Um, there are many um, uh, strategic plan uh, 2023, uh, 2030, sorry, um, to develop. Uh, um, and if you, uh, Clément or other, would like to share your vision of these plans, how they are made and how do you, I mean, you've been there, uh, does it work? What do you think about it? Uh, I, I would like some insights on that. Actually, uh, w when the, the, the idea about the 2030s initiated, it was probably 2010. And back then we thought, okay, uh, this is 20 years ago. Now it is actually six years. So today I'm in a good position to evaluate it's, it's happening or not happening, right? And I think, speaking in Qatar's base, when they announced the World Cup will be happening in Qatar, Everyone was questioning the ability, can we do it? No, no, cannot we do it? Expo Dubai is the same. And even when they announced the winter uh, games in Saudi Arabia, you are making a winter game in Saudi Arabia with the biggest desert probably in the world. And I think the successful in those events is, is proofing that we are on the right way. As I said, it's, uh, we are not only uh, making uh, uh, unsuccessful in the milestones, Qatar, Dubai, and Expo. In fact, we, make, we add the flavor to it. We make Messi wear the golf best and when he is handling or raising the trophy of the World Cup. So this is showing that this is the right place. Whether, uh, and I think uh, uh, in, in the national visions, the healthcare sector specifically, since I was very close in authoring actually some of the framework on this, I think we are making a very great achievement. Uh, medical tourism, like uh, Clément mentioned, before we were discussing the medical tourism from, why out, uh, from in out. Now we are discussing from outside in. Why is that? Because we have the best hospital in the world. Many hospitals across the region, they are listed one of the best 100 hospitals of the world. Best university in the world, in Bahrain, they have Royal College of Ireland, one of the best surgical uh, university. In Qatar, we have Well Cornell Medicine. So we have the facilities, we have the academic arm and the, 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 the supporting this, and we have the best as well medical. We have, I'm an example, the, the, the center I'm managing at the moment at Khan, we have a robotic surgery, it's just for training. There is nowhere in the world that you have a Da Vinci robotic system, it's just for training. This is quite heavily expenditure. We are, uh, in Qatar, we will be announcing very soon a proton therapy. Uh, so this is one of the very few worldwide, and it will be based in Qatar, and it will be accessible for all the region. So when we're talking today about uh, the healthcare landscape in Qatar and the GCC in general, we are talking about a very high developed, very high technology. 
And that's why it makes it appealing for companies, many companies like what Clément mentioned, is this is the area I want to be. This is the area I want to be in the coming 20 years. And 2030, as an example, I think very soon we'll be announcing even 2040, 2050, because 2030, I think most of our, uh, uh, at least from our side, is, is checked, and we are right now building on the other uh, aspects. What is beyond 2030? Thank you very much for those insights, very interesting. Um, well, I will now ask uh, some question about Jean-Pierre, which, uh, who, sorry, represent, uh, <laughs> who is the, the president of a French SME's uh, producing in France, who is also a counselor for the French, uh, um, for French exchange, and is also French healthcare chairman, so I might be careful in my questions. <laughs> uh, Jean-Pierre, as a as the CEO of a, of a French SME, what makes you uh, look at GCC's country and countries, and what made you take the decision that you should go now? Thank you, Joanna. Just two, two or three words on the company. Uh, effectively, I've got a, a little role to play in French healthcare association, but I'm here as the CEO of STEAM Group. It's a, a company, a society specialized in sterilization and disinfection in the hospital. And um, also, um, I would like to thank Business France to still invited SMEs on the stage, because I think it's important uh, to, to take a look not only on the big group, but also to join uh, a part of the knowledge in healthcare market, French knowledge, it's sp spread through SMEs. So when uh, Business France asked me to participate, it's um, also to give a point of view at the SMEs, and maybe uh, SMEs uh, vision golf, something like that. Uh, why, to, to answer uh, your, your question, why? Because in fact, the, the group um, has 25 years old in its market in France, and for 15 years, we decided to go outside of France, and we, we have a, a kind of um, le learning session to, to start in Africa, and to go step by step, opening new countries, and try to and we learn to how to address new markets. And as the SMEs, I think we have some characteristics. The comprehension, the agility, the flexibility to adapt our strategy and our models to the different countries we have. And it's the case in GCC. Of course, it's Saudi Arabia, but as we said, there is also Bahrain, there is also Qatar, and all these countries have their own uh, roadmap, their own culture, their, their own habits. Even if on the healthcare market, we have all, all the same target to improve the security of our patient. And in this case, even if we are SMEs, in our knowledge, we have something to share. And our approach in this case of GCC, it's to share this 20 years experience for new market, on, especially when there is huge opportunity, as you said, a hammer. And my message is clear, even if you are SMEs, even if you are afraid sometimes to go outside of our countries, there, there is some real opportunities to, to show, to share, and to, to go further in the, in the development of our companies. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Um, so maybe uh, from scratch, uh, gentlemen, would you have two or three advices to give to Jean-Pierre and other SMEs that are looking at GCC's countries? Jérôme, maybe, so we do the role. <laughs> it's, um, I'm going to take that from the, uh, the way from the local, okay, because I'm representing a local company here, uh, a small uh, pharma company in the region, which is only a pharma company, but covering all the healthcare spectrum, from manufacturing drugs, from developing drugs, from distribution, from make a medical equipment, hospital as well. So a good kind of oversight and overview of the situation. I think the first kind of advice that I like to say is come, come quick. Because if you don't come, somebody else will be there already. 
very uh, very clear and uh, and so far because it's uh, it's a welcoming place. This is an happening place, and this is a time to be there and to be there not alone, but accompany. I will say with a proper local partner. If I take, we'll say, all the company of the group, we have at least one to two, if not three, uh, international pa partner in our, uh, all the division we have, and we're welcoming more to come. Uh, so people are not shy to come, and not just, uh, shy to ask, and shy to study the market, and even some of them come with uh, all the backup of their government to set up in the, the GCC overall, being uh, any of the country you quote, they will come. But it's not because I'm representing a Saudi company, but there is a weight of the market with Saudi. So majority of them, okay, try to look at where is the volume, where the things could be in terms of uh, quantity and have a kind of a good eyes for the, the Saudi market. So that's really my, my two pieces of uh, advice. And I will uh, leave the more advice to my partner in crime to, to give it. Um, so for us, we are typically in this situation where we are a French SME company. We managed to penetrate quite well the two countries in the in, in the GCC. Um, so I, I completely uh, uh, rely on what Jerome just said. I will add um, that uh, you, uh, I mean, French uh, companies have quite a good reputation uh, worldwide, and especially in the in the GCC region, they have a good expertise. Uh, we can rely on uh, different labels, uh, the French tech being uh, one of them, uh, uh, that is quite looked after. Um, so you need to you need to come. You need to find the right partner. Uh, that's that's very important. Someone who can uh, uh, basically help you to open doors in the country and uh, who has a, a real knowledge of the country, uh, where to implement your business and uh, how to launch it. Uh, but again, I, I repeat what I said earlier, you, you really need to understand the needs of the local authorities and uh, how your technology or your product uh, can uh, basically answer these needs. Uh, once the local authorities understand that your company can really uh, make the life better for their uh, citizens, they will definitely support you uh, and things will go very, very fast. These are countries where it's really easy to do business. Um, and you have a strong support from the government, it can go very quickly. So again, I, I repeat what I said earlier, I, I strongly believe that the public-private partnership, a PPP, with the local authorities is achievable. Uh, if a small company like uh, us managed to do it with the, with the local uh, Ministry of Health, I'm sure that any French company can do it as long as uh, you can show uh, that your expertise uh, can really help uh, the country. Thank you very much. I think if I would give advice, I would give advice uh, about uh, change of perception before coming to the GCC because it's completely can cause you to, to, to fail easily. Uh, you know, um, probably 50 years ago when they constructed the Brasilia in Brazil was a new city, right? And we talked about that. And they thought that if we build it while there is a high technology in the world, then we may construct what we call utopia. It's failed for economic reason. However, I can tell you that in the last 10 years, how many new cities has been built and constructed in the GCC, uh, and it's been constructed considering the smart, uh, the smart cities in place, uh, e-health uh, uh, in place. So we have big majority right now in GCC, very, very, very high intensive infrastructure for integrating e-health like this. It's a very easy. So change your perception when you come to GCC because it's no, no longer the, the community that is, it doesn't have technology implemented and integrated in every aspect of it. It is actually extremely high technology there. In Qatar, as an example, we have 90% EHR integrated across the country. In Saudi Arabia, they are, and I was talking to the Minister of Health, and they are actually have the ability to make any transaction in the insurance scheme in less than three seconds. Imagine, we have the biggest virtual hospital in Saudi Arabia. We have, uh, uh, we have many 
areas of, of that is developed extremely very high from infrastructure. Speaking about the safety, if you ask any French living in any of the GCC, he will tell you one thing about GCC. It's absolutely safe. And it's safe without the exuberant need for national security or anything. It's just naturally safe. I can attest. And you can, you can attest. You're just safe. You don't see anyone outside. You no army around you. No police department around you. It is just safe. Everyone living in. So we are, when you are coming and approaching, you need to build trust with this community. I think when you come, you come with your family. This is give a trust because this is how we can perceive it better in GCC side. So change your perception from com, com, coming from GCC. We, as Clément mentioned, we have different stages, different different maturity. You can see one country is the best in healthcare ahead of others, and you can see them. Others country, they are best in logistics. Others is better in sport. And I think this integration, and as Ms. Safa mentioned in the morning, there's no competition whatsoever. It's completely integration. And I think we're all waiting for the dream of having a real GCC one currency. This will be very powerful even introduced to the whole world. So change your perception is really one advice I give it to anyone approaching GCC. To, just to, 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 to go in your way, it's also because I, f I think that in France we have a chance of excellencies in healthcare that we have to reach this market. We don't have to be afraid, we don't have to live with a, a past view of the, these countries. And our role in the association is also to convince new companies to come with us, with group in pharmaceutical. Uh, market or in medtech or in uh, numeric uh, market, it's important to open the, um, the mind of our companies to reach this huge opportunity on the market. And if I say that, I'm completely convinced that in France we have this level of image in this country, in this area. Maybe it's not the case for other products. For cars, maybe it's more difficult to to push the excellencies. But in healthcare, I'm sure that if we go together, pushed by the institution, by the inst association, we have the capacity, we have the possibility to reach these huge opportunities in, in your countries. This is my real opinion. And of course, it's important also to have the right connection with the institution, with the Ministry of Health, with the partner, because it's a a part of the um, achievement to be connected with people we, who leave the country and with the um, institution on the relay of uh, the different roadmap we will discover in healthcare market in these countries. And uh, if I may just add, uh, that's why forums like the one today are so important. It's uh, to be able to uh, meet with companies from the GCC to find the right partner. Um, uh, we have been lucky at Visiomed to get a lot of support from business friends, whether it was uh, in Riyadh or in Dubai. Uh, so we are very grateful and it was uh, really, really helpful. So I would say if you want to start, you need to come to these kind of forums like today or other roundtable which are regularly organized in, uh, in these cities or these countries because it can really open a lot of doors. Yes, thank you very much. So just before we go to we go a bit deeper into technologies that are booming, trending. Um, the message today will be so change your perspective, come, I mean, go, um, understand and then team up. And I think that is very important. Um, and just Jean-Pierre, I will ask you to take your French healthcare uh, hat now. Uh, but as you know, uh, the source uh, event is uh, organized by Business France, that is a very strong partner to, to team up and to discover. Um, could, you, could you tell us a bit more about uh, l'Equipe de France? Uh, we, we like the soccer player, so you know, like, uh, yeah, we take the same name, Team France. Uh, what, what can you say about it? Yeah, of course, we, we, we have a chance in, in, in France. Uh, of course, I'm president of French Healthcare Association, but I'm also, uh, in French, we say uh, advisor for the foreign uh, business. So, conseiller du commerce extérieur de la France. And I'm very involved in a lot of uh, institutions who, who promote and push the international uh, business for French company. So, 
to ju just to, to answer you, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's important to be connected. It's important to be uh, in the good uh, result. And we have in France um, a kind of mo momentum where all these partners of in international action are together. And, uh, and um, it's not a succession, it's um, just the fact that we want to work together. The team France Export tried to draft every company, every association, every partnership as, as Business France, but also as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to be sure that we have all the capacities to reach uh, our target in the best ways. So it means, my message, don't, don't go alone. Use the opportunity we have in France to go abroad and use all this organization which can help you to make the first step. It's important for us. Yes, for me. thank you very much. And I will just add also that some uh, embassy of teams in France uh, that are really, really helpful and uh, which we are working very well with them. So thank you for everyone. But understand, I mean, um, take them into account because they are very, very uh, reliable partners and uh, they can help a lot uh, on projects. Um, so now we can, maybe we can um, go deeper into technologies. Uh, you've been talking about research and uh, development in the different countries and that's very interesting. Also because it's one of the big and biggest strengths of France, uh, the research, the development. And it's a field where people are used to partner. Um, researchers are used to work together. And so it's something very interesting. From your perspective, uh, what are the technologies that are booming right now? Uh, what are the technologies that should be developed uh, in the different countries? Go ahead. <coughs> it's not just a question of technology. It's also uh, how to transmit our experience, our knowledge. In my case, we are not in EA. Sterilization, it's uh, something very uh, long, uh, very former uh, knowledge, but it's essential to, for, for an hospital. And without sterilization, you don't have operating theater. And everybody of us, we discover the risk of infection through the pandemic. And for sure, these countries, they probably had right now um, a strategic in roadmap in healthcare due also to the pandemic. And in a small business like us, it's important, of course, to share it and to train people and to explain what we're able to do from, from our own experience in, in France. So, of course, this is technology, of course, but it's also how to operate and to transmit our experience for this new project, as you said. And I think that in GCC, we have the opportunity to, to do it easily. This is my opinion. Yes. Uh, for me, is is very interesting area. Maybe is not strongly relevant to the, 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 uh, the area of healthcare, but it's really uh, very well connected. Arabic language. Uh, do you know? What, how much is the content of Arabic language on the web? Just guess. But I have no idea in any language. Yeah. It's actually. less than 5%. It's absolutely shame, right? And that's why I think this is, has been developed very, very strongly. Saudi Arabia, they in, make an initiative for AI in Arabic to increase the content. A few weeks ago in the Qatar in Economic Forum, the same, another initiative was done. I think this is definitely, for the coming few years, will be a very good area for investment. Because all these countries, they want to really leverage that, including research in Arabic, because this was only dominant in English. But we have a big area for research. Precision medicine is definitely, in Qatar, a few months ago, we announced uh, initiating a national institution of precision medicine. Precision medicine, and I think, uh, I think this is where we are going currently, right? In uh, Qatar and GCC, we started a lot to personalize the care. 
we gave excellent care, yes, for the few years back, and I think now we're in a good area, but now personalize the care, personalize medication, precision medicine is definitely one of the area. AI integration in healthcare, I would say we are going very steadily in a good way, but I can say today I'm satisfied for where we are. I don't think so. We still, I think, area for improvement. I do believe that, and this is not bad, not something bad about the, the, the GCC itself, it is something uh, uh, still the development of the AI, because at the end of the, uh, of the day, AI is in data, right? The more the best AI, uh, AI uh, you reach, the, the, it's, it's about the data. And unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have much historical data to feed the AI. So the AI from a predictive analysis or for bred, uh, 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 from predictive of, of the healthcare and uh, uh, Digital twin, human digital twin, is definitely an area for for improvement at the moment, and I think we are taking a very big leap on this on the R and D for the especially for the human uh, digital twin. Uh, there is also a very good uh, area telehealth. Of course, we are very going very advanced right now. We have actually one of the biggest virtual hospital in the world in the Middle East in GCC. Uh, there is also, by the way, uh, GCC, don't underestimate that it's a gateway for the MENA region. So North Africa, with a population like, what, 300, 400 million, uh, or consuming market, this is also a very good uh, uh, advantage, and they have a very good research base there. So the diversity also that you are uh, uh, see it in, in, in GCC, you have in one country more than 120. What is the best area for, uh, uh, for uh, making a research on precision medicine or in healthcare in general? While well, you have all of these diversifications, like you make, you are concentrating all the population in the world in a very small spot. And you need to have to understand how do you react for disease, how you react with vaccination, how they do in a very good health system. And I think this is very worth the, the investment. Because as an example, one of the things I did work during the, at the World Cup is work with FIFA in creating a lot of research papers because you suddenly have, and especially in the emergency part, because it, and suddenly you have more than 120 nationality, they come to watch the games. This is a very rich environment for research, and I'm not research, I'm a researcher myself, so if I, it would be crazy to miss something like that. So I think hundreds of paper is coming already, and it's coming on the pipelines for this period of time, because it was extremely quite interesting. And as I said before, we have not only a very good infrastructure, but we have also the best uh, medicine or healthcare, health and science university in the world. They already there in the Middle East, and I saw many European, many people in America, they choose to come and study in the Royal College in, 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 of Ireland in Bahrain, not in Ireland. The same in US, they want to come and get the medical uh, grade and medical license in the Will Cornell in Qatar, not in Will Cornell in US. So I think we are now, the, the, the whole landscape has been shifting to GCC, and there's a big area for research. Just before um, your intervention, um, could you please, Ama, give us a bit more uh, insight on the um, regulation of IA? Do, do you have some insight? Because it's also something which is very course, important for the, for the companies that want to develop. Yes, I, I think we have a big area for improvement right now. So we started to see a lot of AI regulation across. Definitely, I think UAE, I consider, is one of the most advanced AI regulation. In fact, they are going right now with AI ethics itself. But also, I can see in Saudi and Qatar, there is a big area for this, considering the big implementation at the moment. So from a regulatory body, there's always area for improvement. And I think there is definitely a very good move in the future. Uh, but also we have a very good example that they already make a regulation. They already start to work and make uh, many programs to enhance the AI integration for AI ethics from uh, enhancing the data. And the data is extremely an area for me. I always consider a problem in the Middle East, not only in GCC, because accuracy of the data is a big question mark. Um, if we can consider where probably 10 years ago we started to mine for the accuracy of the data, but the problem 10 years is not enough margin to create a good AI engine. So this is definitely an area for improvement, and, uh, but again, uh, uh, we are moving very fast on this, especially from the policy making and regulation perspective. Thank you. 
I uh, also believe that due to their geographical and economical situation, the GCC countries are, so they are hub, right? You have um, many different people from Asia, Africa, Europe, who are coming to travel there or live there. So for now, many years, the local uh, health authorities had to put uh, traceability in place. They have to track the health data in order to uh, uh, safeguard their population against uh, disease and pandemic. That's also one of the reasons why they were actually very good in handling the COVID-19 pandemic uh, with a mass testing uh, through a digitization of the health on various technology. So of course, the, so they are early adopter of healthcare technologies on digitization, uh, what we call digital health, basically. Uh, they are really, really advanced in that field. Of course, the elephant in the room being the AI. So AI is not an end, it's just a tool for the healthcare professional to do better their jobs. Today there is a dual approach, of course there is the quantitative approach because you can do a treat, uh, uh, you can uh, enable the treatment with AI of massive data set of uh, healthcare data, uh, which is very important, but there is also the the qualitative side where you can also help doctors on humans how to analyze this data much quicker because sometimes it can be very, very difficult. Um, we have concrete examples. We use AI software to read the x-rays in our centers. Uh, we, are, we also use uh, AI for the treatment of DNA and genomic tests, these kind of things. So um, uh, today, these countries are early adopters of all, uh, all of these uh, technologies, which is making them in the front in terms of uh, healthcare uh, services. Thank you very much. <coughs> so I'm going to talk to something different than AI. Okay, I'm going to go back. I would say to what is the essence of it, because all that, as rightly say, is tools, tools that we are using. But I'm more, I would say myself, I would say carry uh, carry on right now with happening in the region. In the region right now, as rightly said the level of the university is rising up. The level of all the institution is getting to the point that supported, if we take what else, I'm going to go back to the, the drugs itself, uh, get, I would say, some very stringent, in a good term, regulatory authority, which are really the filter, I would say, to have the best product to put on those markets, okay? And we should also uh, talk about one of the, the key elements, which is the one which is aligning at least all the GCC countries, which is a GAC, okay, which is a consortium of all the health authority for the, the Gulf, which is like the MEA and so far so on. It's something which is there, which is supported and working. This benefit also from a change, and you have it either in Abu Dhabi, either in Saudi, with a push towards discovering, discovering new drugs, okay, at different stages. So you have a full setup of clinical, preclinical structure which are put in place and already used by a few multinational and fully open to anybody that like to, to venture and to have, I would say, their product either developed, co-developed from any kind of phase of the development. And this is very important because that will help also because in this part of the world, what we forget is that everybody knows about the cardiovascular diseases, everybody knows about diabetes, everybody knows that, but there is a handful of rare diseases Okay, in this part of the world, which are very specific, which because of not having any kind of uh, lucrative aspect for any multinational, are not taken care. But they could be taken care by the experience, by the, the history, by the scientist of this place. Okay, and that's something that is also going on, moving on. And there is already a, a few programs which has been launched almost from scratch. Okay, getting some molecule on the on the ground with the lens of developing new chemical entity, and this with the help of, I would say, uh, unfortunately, university, scientific center, or medical center, which are not French. Okay, so there is, there is an appeal, there is things to be done there. Okay, because it's not only to, to continue again and to drop some technology, it's to make sure that one of the common trait between all the country is let's do something for the country. Which I don't take it. I put like a seed. And from this seed, on the localization part of it, I grow something out. Okay? And that will capitalize all the rest and what is important. And there is something very happening on this, on this uh, landscape. 
thank you very much for that. Um, Jean-Pierre points out uh, transfer tech, um, 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 yeah, the transfer tech, yeah, I, I forgot my word. Uh, could, you, could you please, uh, on your side, uh, tell us if it's something, how it is happening and uh, um, what you can, uh, which kind of advice you can give to French companies that would like to, to do transfer tech projects uh, with GCC countries? Uh, f f first of all, uh, after pandemic, most of government uh, they understood that, as you said, we have to stop just buying something when we need it, and it's a part of the prevention in healthcare we need. And one of the solutions is to have on the ground in the country the capacities and the, and the, um, the knowledge to to be to affront to fight against something like a pandemic or something else. And um, of course, it's, um, for, for ACME, it's um, an important step when you have to take your knowledge, your knowledge sorry, and to transfer it. It means that you have to make a lot of training. A lot, you have to find the right partner. You have to understand the, the rules of the country. You have to find money. and. Uh, Concerning GCC, and especially Saudi Arabia, but I'm sure also the, the other countries, we have all these criteria. We have the willingness of the government, we have uh, space, we have a uh, financial um, approach, and we also have uh, companies, Saudian or GCC companies, who are waiting for this, um, this, way, this way of collaboration. So for us, it's naturally that after opening Many subsidiaries in Africa, I didn't say it, but we are in 15 com countries in Africa. We, we have made the choice to go further and to go further in the GCC to open in the next month an industrial site, probably in Saudi Arabia. So just my message, and everybody says the same uh, since this morning, and especially uh, my friend uh, Jérôme, the market is here. The opportunity is here. It's the right moment for French company to go and to prove what we're able to transmit and to share with uh, these countries. This is my real opinion, and this is what I, I will keep uh, inside to be sure that through our healthcare ecosystem, we'll be able to transmit and to explain that it's the right moment and the right place. Also, sorry, a very important point on what Jean-Pierre has said is um, a very important parameter to, uh, to implement a successful project in the, GC in the GCC if you are a French company. Uh, of course, you need to have the relationship, you need to bring your technology, your expertise, etc. But as we always say, cash is king, so you need to find the funding to fund your expansion on your implementation in the GCC countries. People may think it's really difficult, but in reality, you have a vibrant financial ecosystem all across the GCC. Um, I just give you an example. I was, I was having lunch with uh, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Bahrain today, and I was telling him the story how us, a French company, with a subsidiary in Dubai, we actually found a Bahraini fund to finance our expansion in Saudi Arabia. So you have actually uh, many different uh, players and actors, financial actors, whether it's in Dubai, Bahrain, Riyadh today. You have a lot of uh, investment through the PIF, for example, with actually funding the expansion of many uh, startups, especially in the healthcare sectors across the region. So you must not be afraid. You need to go and knock on the door, find the right partners, Again, if you have the right uh, technology, they will uh, welcome you with open arms on, uh, on fund your project. There is no actually, I, I know no country in the world, they are actually helping you to come, register your company, provide you with a mentorship, help you to penetrate the market, register you free for charge, and connect you with the venture, uh, potential venture capital, help you with escalation because the market probably it can be more potential in other countries. Uh, and this is all included in many hundreds of entities in, in, uh, in GCC. 
uh, happening in Saudi, happening in Bahrain, happening in Kuwait, happening in Qatar, of course, uh, happening in UAE. Uh, so this is always big market support you from even ideation stage. POC, MVB, until you make a product, to help you to go to the market, teach you as you go. So they are not even looking for a full readiness of a startup or, or a company. They are very happy to help you. If you wish, come and we will help you even through the way. We will teach you how to do this. And we will help you to understand the culture, the market, how you do better, how you keep your money, how to cycle your revenues, how you c control and organize your cash flow, how you manage a business. And uh, this is very important for SMEs. So as, the, of course, the focus on the large companies, also there is a big market for the SMEs as well. So, yes, thank you so much. Uh, I think our time is, uh, our time is up. So uh, I would like to thank you all, gentlemen, for this uh, round table. You know, if, if I can conclude in... In 10 seconds, uh, it's right here, right now, and uh, you have everything you need to team up both in France, thanks to our uh, incredible ecosystem that is very supporting, and thanks to the countries that are willing to partnership with you. So it's partnership, partnership, partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you.